I was really, really excited to start playing this game for this video. Maybe I've just deprived myself of good games for a while, but it wasn't until I grabbed my old PS3 copy of Wolverine Origins off my shelf that I really realized how much I loved this thing back when it came out. Whenever this game is brought up online, it's often followed up by a joke about how much better it is than the movie because it's a hyper-violent hack and slash God of War-esque Wolverine game that really surpassed all its expectations. And being like 13 or 14 when I first played this, I thought it was basically the coolest thing ever. Keep that in mind going into this video because unlike the Avatar game or the Cars games, I have some pretty great memories with this. Um, I finished it multiple times back in the day and I was curious to see how well it held up to the obscenely rose-tinted glasses I was wearing. On top of this, it's a really strange product to even exist. It loosely follows the plot of the movie, but it deviates in some strange ways and the whole extreme violence thing is honestly pretty surprising considering how relatively PG this movie and superhero movies were back then, so let's find out what the deal with that is. The game opens with a a brilliantly edgy pre-rendered cutscene set in the not-too-distant future, where Logan is brutally shredding up guards with none other than Hugh Jackman himself narrating as Wolverine and introducing himself as the best there is at what he does. I really like this as an opening because it's basically just pinning Wolverine as an absolute killing machine, which is basically all he is in this. He's a lot closer to the Terminator here than the film's depiction of him, and this cutscene really gives you that whole we're not messing around kind of vibe. Also, keep in mind that Wolverine only kind of resembles Hugh Jackman in this cutscene, but he resembles him more during gameplay and in other cutscenes. We then flash back into the past where you can see Logan, Sabretooth, and Will I Am's characters in a helicopter. Uh, these three characters are the only three characters where the original cast reprised their voice roles, which is kind of weird, right? Like, Jackman and Liev Schreiber make sense, but Will I Am coming back and not Danny Houston or any of the other cast members is a little odd to me. Jackman does a really good job throughout the game, which is great, even if in combat he says the same things over and over, and Will I Am and Schreiber are good enough too. Generally, the acting here is okay, though the cutscenes and the dialogue are usually pretty awkward, um, especially when the game attempts to get all emotional like with Logan's girlfriend, but hey, I guess you could say that the awkwardness here is at least accurate to the movie. Cuckoo Kachu got screwed. Kwe Kuachu, the Wolverine. After literally two lines of banter that explain nothing, the helicopter gets shot out of the air and you fly down to Africa in what's a pretty cool title card. Uh, the first thing I noticed playing this was how incredibly bad the frame rate is. I'm always surprised by how I used to not really care about poor frame rates when I was a kid because like, Jesus, this ain't good. Um, eventually I got used to it and I generally stopped noticing it. Like a lot of the time it is a lot better than it is in this first area, but it's still really bad and it's, sometimes it's even worse. Um, I think I think the PC port is the way to go because reading old forums, people seem to think that it was a pretty well done port, but I have no experience with it or how it runs on modern hardware, so take that with a grain of salt. The second thing I noticed was how goddamn violent this game is. Like, the violence here is next level and I love it. You can dismember heads and limbs and cut people in two and impale people and really just chaotically shred up every enemy you see, which is exactly how Wolverine should be. The sound design goes that extra mile by having constant blood splatter sounds, which is coupled with the metallic slashing noises from Logan's claws. It all just makes it that much more cathartic. What's most impressive is Wolverine's character model, which constantly and procedurally gets torn down to the bone when you take damage, and you can just watch it heal up as you regenerate, which is amazing. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna get put on a list for this video. This game was developed by Activision's Raven Software, who used to be a super beloved studio before getting merged into the Call of Duty machine, and they certainly have a history of violence, if you will. Uh, in the early 2000s, their Soldier of Fortune series is almost exclusively remembered for its hyper-violence, with what's still an almost unparalleled level of gore and dismemberment. They were also familiar with both the hack and slash genre and the Marvel Universe as they made the well-respected X-Men Legends games and Marvel Ultimate Alliance. After Ultimate Alliance finished up in 2006, Raven really wanted to do justice to the Wolverine character that they'd already had some experience with, so with Activision they made a deal with Marvel to get this thing signed off, with it having nothing to do with the movie, which wouldn't be announced until late 2007. Now during development, Raven knew that Fox were doing a Wolverine movie, but they weren't really concerning themselves with it as 
as the deal they had was with Marvel, who had the rights to all the media regarding the character Wolverine, except for the cinematic rights which Fox held. I can't find exact dates on when Activision, Marvel and Fox made the deal to turn this into the movie game, but reading developer interviews and just by playing the game, it's pretty easy to wager that it made the Switch fairly late in development. Marvel were the ones who signed off early on the idea of intense violence, and the developers admit that if the deal had been done with Fox from the get-go, they probably wouldn't have signed off on it, so thank god that didn't happen I guess. This also means that the game had a development period of about two and a half years, rather than the rushed shorter period that movie games generally have, which if we've learned anything from the movie games we've looked at so far, is a fantastic sign. After crashing down and marvelling at the bad frame rate and the extreme violence, you start to familiarise yourself with what is predictably a very old school God of War-esque combat system. You have a light attack, a heavy attack, special abilities, and a grab slash throw button, and it all just feels really good. As expected, you have combos and AoEs, and you can uppercut people into the air and start air comboing them. Uh, you progressively level up and pour stats into different moves, and even build your character in slightly different directions using modifiers. There's also collectibles around, which are rare enough and valuable enough that they actually feel fun to find, and some of them can help you unlock classic Wolverine suits, which I really love. The game and the combat has got all the standard stuff you'd expect, but just killing dudes here is exceptionally punchy, especially with all the visual effects. I also liked how they scattered Mad World or Sleeping Dogs-esque environmental kills everywhere, where you can throw dudes into traps and spikes and that sort of thing. It, it all just adds to the fun and the grotesqueness of it all. Very quickly, you'll learn the lunge ability, where you press R1 to lock onto an enemy and L1 to just absolutely launch yourself at them, and this is the central mechanic to Wolverine Origins, and it is amazing. Our battle arenas just become you flying all over the place, ripping up dudes everywhere, and it's just so viscerally fun. It, it, it appeals to me on some ridiculous, hyper-masculine, animalistic level, where all my real-life concerns are sidelines for this wonderfully silly combat system. Um, funnily enough, it reminded me most of the feeling Doom 2016 gives me. I know it might not seem obvious why, but if you've played it, you know that that game did everything it did to keep you moving towards the enemies and keep you in the action. Like, it was super important for that game to always make you feel like that you were the powerful one and you were the aggressor in every encounter, which, for lack of a better word, just made you feel badass. And the same thing can be said about X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, it's an incredibly cathartic system that is amazing for letting off steam, which thematically works a treat because Logan is badass and pissed off throughout the entire game. After some fun set pieces in Africa, including one where you lunge between boats which is super fun, the game then jumps from the past to the current timeline where you're having a weird chat with your girlfriend before you're facing off with Sabretooth in and outside of a bar in the form of a boss battle, which is pretty fun. Sabretooth wins the fight in a cutscene after you defeat him in gameplay of course, he then kills your girl, destroys your claws, and then Striker, who looks nothing like Danny Houston, appears out of nowhere to offer you the adamantium deal. Uh, unlike what we saw in Africa, this scene actually does represent events that happened in the movie, even if it's not super close. Um, the game quickly then cuts to a very, very well-made pre-rendered cutscene of the adamantium procedure. Like, this cutscene in particular looks a step above all the other cutscenes, even the other pre-rendered cutscenes to me, and then after that, you play through a level breaking out of that facility. It's mostly really obvious what was developed before the Fox deal and what was developed afterwards. Like, at any given time, the game is either super obviously based on the movie, or it's basically nothing like the movie, and you're like fighting robots in a science lab or giant lava monsters in ancient African ruins, or in cutscenes, Wolvie looks like Hugh Jackman, or he doesn't look like Hugh Jackman at all. Um, structurally, the game jumps between flashbacks set in Africa and current time levels throughout the entire game, hinting towards some mysterious event which happened in Africa that you find out right at the end of the game. This event represents that one from the start of the movie, but it's really quite different here. Um, along with being revealed right before the last level instead of at the very start, there's no tower bit, and it actually plays during daylight. Uh, the general gist of what happens is the same, yet it all plays out in a pretty different way, like only Striker, Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Deadpool are here, with this being Deadpool's only scene in the game before he turns into that weird monstrosity, whereas in the movie there's a whole cast of baddies in this scene. You do go after a lot of the guys from the movie in the game as revenge, but they're not actually in this cutscene, which is really quite weird. Just generally in the game, that's kind of what this is like story-wise. It's, it's a bit of a mess, and it rarely lines up with the film. Like that scene in the movie where Wolverine fights that guy who's really good with guns in that helicopter kind of plays out in the game, like, it's set in an entirely different place in a facility in the snow during nighttime, and it's all quite different, but at the end you do take him down in a helicopter and use his headset to chat with Striker, just like in the movie. Apparently the movie is plagued with rewrites, which is why it is how it is, so it makes me wonder if this game is actually more accurate to the original script in some ways, because the differences when it is trying to be based on the movie seem pretty superficial. Either that, or the late 
Fox involvement just made them reshuffle and rework what they already had and sort of try and merge it into the movie. If I had to guess, it's probably a bit of column A and a bit of column B. During the facility breakout segment, you're treated to one of this game's very few, but very welcome, top tier, A grade, comedic gags. Yeah, we did it! Target is Come down! Command! Weapon X is dead! I repeat, Weapon X is dead! <laughs> hey, somebody take my picture! Sure send me a copy. Shit, he's alive! Let's go! Let's go! Amazing. You also fight one of these things in this level, which are the game's most frequent mini-bosses, and while they're fun the first couple of times, they get overused like crazy as the game goes on. On top of that, the Africa segments, which have different enemy types, have their very own cut and paste version of this guy, just in case you started to miss him, and it's, uh, it's dreadful. One of the worst things about this game is the overuse of this particular mini-boss. I can't stress how bad it is. Like, it's just a simple dodge and then attack during a window boss fight, and it's seriously unfun. It's not long until you make it to this snow level where the game attempts stealth before, predictably, giving up on it really quick. Um, as usual you go through shutting up guys, it slowly introduces more enemy types and there's some light puzzling and platforming to break it all up. I'd say about 20% of the time you're puzzling and platforming and honestly it's kind of boring but it breaks up the game well enough and to make it simpler they have this thing called feral vision which is just ripped straight from Arkham Asylum and it's very welcome. Um, you'll start to notice that this level is dragging a bit, especially with all those goddamn copy paste mini bosses and like most levels it's going on a bit longer than it should but um it doesn't matter because the combat is just so damn fun especially when you're pinning guys to trees in the snowy forests The level ends with the boss battle with the helicopter gun dude that's broken up into segments and at first it's really refreshing only because it's a boss battle that isn't this. Um, I managed to kill him extremely easily but then in the next cutscene he was alive and the battle went on. I have no idea what happens here, I have no idea if that was like a decoy or something or if I actually broke the game. Uh, generally this entire game is a bit janky like that. Uh, you then start fighting him in this helicopter on the roof and he shoots these guys in containment chambers who start to mutate into something which I was sort of getting hyped for when I saw it happening because I was like, man, these look like they're going to be a new type of mini boss. But then the character model literally switches within like a single frame to the same old mini boss. And it was the biggest eye roll I had through this game. And then you fight like six of them in a row after that. So it's just the worst. Like I was enjoying this boss battle up until this point because it was a break from these mini bosses. And then it just spams you with more of these annoying ass mini bosses. After some more Africa stuff, you're introduced to a level set in a pristine white science lab that seems to be built into some cliff which is a really nice change to the usual drab looking facility kind of places but annoyingly this level is extremely short because you quickly take a huge elevator down to yet another drab facility type place where they're building a giant robot and this section is where the game really started to lose me. At this point it feels like all you've seen in the game is either this one Africa location it keeps returning to or drab dull facilities and every level feels far longer than it should be. Only this one is somehow even more bland and it even features a fair a bit of backtracking which sucks because everywhere looks the same with all the reused assets. At this point I was just walking around throwing people off the edges because even the super fun combat felt like it had lost most of its steam by this point. It even slots in not one but two entire Africa flashback levels so it just feels like it goes on forever and ever and the pacing absolutely crashes. If you do slog through this level though you reach a pretty visually spectacular boss battle with a giant robot. This boss battle goes on for too long but the whole concept is just so wonderful that the game slowly starts to win you back. Once you beat that, it jumps straight into the boss battle with the blob with basically zero context. The robot battle was pretty long and exhausting, so jumping straight into this is a bit insane, especially considering how broken the pacing has been so far, but this battle itself is otherwise refreshingly quite fun. Wolverine hurls these fat jokes at him the whole battle which is great and you ride him around the grocery store smashing shelves which tanks the frame rate and it's just wonderful. It's quick and short and feels thrown in for the sake of the movie even though it doesn't even match the location in the movie but it's still really fun. After this double boss battle bonanza you then suddenly find yourself in another fun but tiring third boss battle with Magic Mike. It's crazy how this game has an extremely long repetitive boring stretch followed up by three boss battles in a row each of which are better than the last. Like each of these could have had a better 
better build up and been paced out throughout that boring bit, but this game doesn't care and it just smacks you with these back to back to back bosses out of nowhere. Gambit escapes in your first fight with him and you're treated to what I think is the best level in the entire game. It's set in a Vegas casino with a great city backdrop where you're going in and out of the building, climbing to the top and Gambit introduces his own troops with these guys which are really fun to fight and throughout the level they're fighting against Striker's troops which is just fantastic. I've said it before but I absolutely love it when games have different factions fighting each other without your input, like there's always something really cool about that and it's done well enough here. You spend the level jumping in and out of fights with Gambit and there's great set pieces and it's not a facility thank god and it just generally refreshed the game a lot for me. You then flash back to Africa for the final time. I've left it until now to complain about these sections because I feel like this problem is at its fullest effect with this final flashback. You finally beat Gambit in this spectacular scene and you're about to go to the island to finish the game off and then nope Africa again, the same environment is back and like I like the enemy variety Africa provides, like it's a completely different set of enemies which I think is really great aside from those reskinned mini bosses but along with Africa's endlessly repetitive environments it features way more puzzling and platforming than the other locations so while at first the whole flashing back thing kind of works for variety's sake and as a palette cleanser it wears thin super quick and works against the game's already pretty whacked out pacing. Finally after the big evil Africa event you suddenly arrive at the end island without a build up cutscene or anything which is a little weird but otherwise it's a short but fun level to cap off the game complete with a boss battle with Sabretooth who by this point I kind of forgot was in the game. I really wish he was in it throughout because Liev Schreiber is great in the movie and it would have been nice to see him more. Uh, it has that whole thing about Logan's girlfriend actually being alive and then you fight the whacked out version of Deadpool that, that weird monstrosity which is actually a pretty fun boss battle and it even ends on that big chimney thing. Is it weird to call this thing a chimney? I don't know. I also like how if you throw off the edge he just teleports back because that's one of his powers. That's a nice touch though, you know, it's kind of inconsistent because when you threw Gambit off an edge he just hit an invisible barrier. Once you beat Deadpool you get a final cutscene that's surprisingly similar to the one in the movie, all things considered. You also get a follow up cutscene to the opening cutscene in the game which was set in the future and it feels super out of nowhere. It's super brutal and it's pretty entertaining and I think it ties in with an extremely minor character from the boring robot level and it, you know, kind of sets up a sequel-ish? Like, it feels like this cutscene is left over from the pre-Fox version of this game. Well, I mean, obviously it is because it doesn't look like Hugh Jackman. And this game just ends up feeling super mishmashy, and, and this particular scene feels super mishmashy with the rest of the game. This whole thing is just such a patchwork, yet it all kind of ties together because it's still just an angry Wolverine killing dudes. You barely need an excuse for that, and sort of the gameplay harmonizes with the whole being really angry and wanting to kill everything thing so well that all the story just fades into the background. Um, at this point I finished the game feeling pretty damn good about it. There was a little bit of a sense of relief once it was over which is a really bad sign but for all my complaining about the mini bosses and the huge pacing slump, Wolverine Origins really won me back by the end and the combat is just so so satisfying that it really elevates it beyond its shortcomings. Like this is a really janky game that can come across as quite sloppy but at the end of the day Wolverine Origins is like really good greasy fast food. Uh, it ain't game changing, it ain't clean, it ain't well made, but if you're in the right mood it's perfect and it's exactly what you're after. I'm kind of hungry now. I wish this game got a sequel because there are some things it could iron out and just be an amazing perfect game, but otherwise I still strongly recommend this, it's really really fun. Um, it's not a huge deal but the game is far too easy on medium difficulty and you can't unlock hard mode without beating the game once on either easy or medium, so if you pick this up see if if you can load a save into it somehow so you can play on hard mode, but if you can't, it's still definitely worth a play. Raven would go on to release the 2009 Wolfenstein reboot as well as Singularity which are both pretty interesting games in their own right before just becoming another Call of Duty support team. How good's Activision? This game also got releases on PS2, DS, PSP and Wii which look kind of interesting in their own right so maybe I should go cover them sometime though I really need to stop saying I'll do stuff like that because I have so many ideas that I want to cover. But um, otherwise guys thank you so much for watching thanks for supporting the channel as always subscribe and check out some of my other content if you like it it's all pretty laid back and interesting and i try and look at games that are that are fascinating in their own ways so it's all pretty good stuff at least i think it is but you know i'm i'm delusional um anyway glad you watched thanks for watching have a good one